I just want to reiterate because I'll never, I'll, I'll, I'll never be able to get over this. I will, I'll never be able to get over this. I will, I'll never, I'll never be able to get over this. I have to do it every time he. Don't look at my watch history. I, I started watching Game of Thrones clips again. Oh God, in the pain, it all came, it all came rushing back to me. Oh, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. I I don't know why I did it. It was a 30 minute video on It was a 30 minute video on the small council meetings. 40 minutes. <sighs> Fuck. What happened? Oh my god. Oh. Never watch it. Should I give it a try? The first four seasons of Game of Thrones were some of the best TV ever made. Probably my second favorite show behind the wire. Just because it's in such a wildly different genre. Watch House of the Dragon. Is it actually good? Like, maybe I will. I don't know. Every scene with Tywin. Oh, you want a hot Game of Thrones take, actually? Do you want a hot Game of Thrones take? Are you ready? Here we go. I don't know if there's a hot take or not. Who is the smartest character? No, not the smartest character. No. Just in the Lannisters. I think Tywin was actually smarter than Tyrion. Do you agree with that? Do you think that's a hot take or not? Oh, we've got some disagreement. Okay, okay. I just realized all that super mega drama happened when you were on vacation. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. It's not even it's not even controversial. In what way? Well, I just I noticed a lot that there are a lot of scenes where Tywin and Tyrion are going back and forth, and every single time, Tywin is always a step ahead of Tyrion. He seems to respect his intelligence at least, but there's never I, unless I'm wrong, I don't remember it. There's never a scene where Tyrion legitimately catches Tywin off guard except when he kills him. Spoiler alert. Who is the dumbest non-mentally disabled character in Game of Thrones? Jon Snow. Easily. I don't even have to think about that. It's obviously it's Jon Snow. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, God. Okay, we can't. I'm sorry. No, I don't want to talk about this. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't, I can't go down this road again. It's going to be two hours of pain. Oh, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. I don't, I don't want it. I don't want to think about it. You got brain damage after being dead? Have you watched Breaking Bad? Yeah, Breaking Bad was good. Tyrion became the dumbest character towards the end? A little bit. Um, something that doesn't get talked enough about by reviewers is there is a magical force in the Game of Thrones universe, which is called the, da the Daenerys Mind Grinder. Okay, where anybody that was in Daenerys' fucking orbit, their mind slowly got churned into nothing. Anybody that she would capture, their character would become boring, stupid, worthless. No matter how high of a height, no matter how elevated that character's involvement in, in Game of Thrones was, it just got destroyed by Daenerys. Sir, Sir Barristan, the guy that fucking threw his armor, said he would kill all four Kingsguard, carve them up like butter, and kill Joffrey, that epic dude ends up dying in some stupid fuck hallway to a bunch of masked fucking losers. Um, Tyrion, arguably one of the most entertaining characters in Game of Thrones, every single scene he has with Daenerys is just boring, stupid, worthless, pointless shit. He becomes a boring, dumb, fucking worthless character. Like every single Varys, the most plotting, scheming dude in the entire fucking show, almost besides Littlefinger, becomes a fucking moron that gets caught by, Dan like, come on. Destiny, definitely it's Rob Stark. He threw away his alliance in order to bang a nurse. Um, I feel like if you were to draw traits for the households, I feel like the Starks are like a, they're not supposed to be a scheming Machiavellian people. They're supposed to be a people that wear their heart on their sleeve. So I feel like it's kind of in character for a Stark to literally choose a bad wife for love rather than for like a strategic line that feels like a very stark trait to me you know so was it dumb kind of yeah but i mean like i think that i mean arguably ned um stark was killed because he was stupid right because he was honorable and he wanted to do the right thing and he thought he could expend uh, uh, expunge expel expunge the queen and everybody from the capital and he was just too honorable stupid like he wasn't scheming at all yeah not really they're all about honor and rob broke an oath yeah, that is kind of true, too, though. Did Rob make that oath or did his mom? But Rob probably signed off on it, I think. Yeah, no, that's true. That is true. Hi, what's up? Hello. 
We can't do this for too long because I get like severe. This doesn't sound <laughs> like uh, pain whenever I remember a game. Of no, Thrones. no, I understand. Everyone soul. became, everyone became dumb at the end. After season five, that's when they ran out of book material. So Tyrion just sat around doing nothing in season six, waiting for shit to happen. Uh, Varys all of a sudden became dumb. It just got so, just so bad after they ran out of book material. Just so bad. I, you know what? I don't. I don't know if I buy that. I feel like something... Well, maybe. No, maybe maybe plot-wise. There were so many... Par first of all, the directing and everything is stellar in the first four mm. seasons of Game of Thrones. And there is original writing that D&D &D did. My understanding is... And you can tell me because I remember the books. My understanding is like all of the dialogue basically between Cersei and Robert was written by D&D. &D. None of that is book material. True. And that is the some best of the scene highlights... Yeah, that's some of the highlights of season one for me is their relationship. So they can do stuff, but maybe maybe without the outline or the structure, maybe they just, yeah, I don't know. That's exactly what it is. And uh, no, my my personal idea is that they really wanted to just move on from this. They to were the doing Star it for Wars over ten shit years. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah, they had the Star Wars thing lined up that fell through after season eight tanked. Uh, well, to be fair, season eight did very well for a lot of the HBO execs. Mm -hmm. uh, they loved they loved the money they got from it because they were making so much money just from all the viewers, 30 million viewers I think at the end. But it just was not that good at all towards the end. And uh, yeah, they ran out of books. We're still waiting for this asshole George R. R. Martin to finish the last the, the second to last book, mm -hmm. and he's just been dragging his feet on that. I was, you know, I would say maybe. It might be the case that if George never finishes his books, maybe I maybe I'd be like, you know what, the ending of Game of Thrones is about as it was. Maybe it's whatever because like I guess how because how are they gonna wrap it all up? Like such an incredibly mm -hmm. convoluted plot that's essentially like going on forever. Um, yeah. So I don't know if uh, you haven't read the books, right? No, I'm familiar he with added... a lot of stuff in them because I I read that uh, Free Folk subreddit a ton, so <laughs> I osmosis some of the book material from that subreddit, but yeah. He, he is continuously adding so many characters, so many plots, so many things are going on. There is no way he could finish it in two books. Because next next is Winds of Winter, waiting for that, and after that is Dream of Spring. Mm -hmm. um, you had my guy uh, Preston Jacobs on a while ago, and he actually is currently doing a fan fiction of Winds of Winter right now, its whole project. Mm -hmm. And he, if you have him back on, he'll tell you it's a difficult job trying to get all these characters and just write them in a way where it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I will say something, especially looking back, and especially as much as people hate her now, they outgrew it. I have mad respect that J.K. Rowling, not only did she have like an outline of the entire plot, she was ruthless in pumping out. I think it was every, was it every single year? It was book, 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 even when she started working with like the movies and everything. Man, she was a workhorse. She got it all done and everything wrapped up and everything worked well. But again, she had like an outline for everything. Whereas I think George just like writes and writes and writes and sees what happens basically, but yeah. Ultimately, the problem is if he doesn't put out his book, then his legacy is ruined. Because he's an old guy, and I hate saying this because it sounds so morbid, but <laughs> he could die at any second. He could. And if he doesn't finish his book, then that means his legacy is is tarnished. Like, it, it's just I, – I always say, like, the Mount Rushmore of great fantasy series. I would, I would put begrudgingly J.K. on there, of course, Tolkien. Mm -hmm. I would love to put George R. R. Martin on there, but – you know, he hasn't finished his uh, magnum opus. He just keeps telling you, it's coming, it's coming, just wait. Bro, we've been waiting for 12 years. Where are you at? Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, yeah, because uh, maybe his legacy is better if he doesn't finish. Who knows? Because, man, yeah. I wonder if there's ever going to be a point where he finishes Winds of Winter and then the spring book, and then at the end, people are like, God, it was better when we didn't know. Like, if it's actually, <laughs> you know. By the way, real quick, you, um, I know you, uh, you said you didn't, you didn't see House of the Dragon, right? No, I just have, like, a lot of pain in my body from revisiting anything related to Game of Thrones. It's actually, like, traumatizing. Is it good? Do you think it's good? Would you recommend it? I really enjoyed it. There is this general consensus that it kind of shifts a little bit halfway because the, the story takes place almost 150 years before the start of Season 1 of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, far contained, and the story is finished. It's not It's not going to be a Winds of Winter sure. Game of Thrones Season 5 repeat. So you can watch it and get into it, but there is a massive time skip in the middle, but they handled it very well. The guy doing the whole show, he's a big fan, and you can tell. Mm -hmm. He puts in little Easter eggs for fans and uh yeah no it's uh it's it's a I, I i really liked it this is one of those shows where despite it being 
because you know how there's like grifters who will complain about women in, in fantasy and whatnot and black people in fantasy. Mm-hmm. This is one of those shows where even the grifters can't grift on this. The, even they had to agree that it was fairly good. Yeah. Did, when you said there's a time skip, does it cover the um, Baratheon revolt or whatever? No, uh, this is this is uh, all Targaryen stuff. This is gotcha, the one gotcha, mark okay. against the show, I'll say. Mm-hmm. Game of Thrones goes everywhere. This show, House of the Dragon, mostly stays in King's Landing and the area around King's Landing. Now, honest to God, that's fine because everything to the east was fucking horrible <laughs> anyway in Game <laughs> of Thrones. I shouldn't say all. No, I actually, Daenerys was one of the few characters that I hated basically since the beginning of the entire show even in the early really seasons. you didn't love her her arc at in the beginning of the show where you know she's learning to come into her own and all that no the reason why i didn't like it as much is um the thing that drew me to game of thrones so much initially was it felt like a world of consequence where people made decisions and sometimes good things happen and sometimes bad things happen it didn't follow the traditional moral arcs that most stories do where as long as it's a good character making good decisions he'll always be rewarded um sometimes a good character can make a more morally righteous or upstanding decision and get fucked for it. Daenerys always seemed like, even from the very beginning, she had, I don't want to say plot armor because it's a little bit reductive, but like she's got a bunch of basically unearned privilege. Like she's resistant to fire. She got dragon eggs. Thankfully, I know it's marked as like a defeat or a bad thing that her son died, but like her, she had her child died in her womb. So she didn't have a kid slowing her down. Like she's got like all these advisors coming from all over the world. She's got some random simp dude that's in love with her that shows up to like fuck her and be her advice. Like she just gets so much external help. And like the one big, like, thank you. The one big like own moment she had where she outsmarted a guy was just because she happened to um, be speaking Valerian from birth without the other guy knowing it when she tricked the dude over the dragon thing. Um, mm. So like, I don't know. Just it feels like she didn't like actually earn or accomplish or achieve anything on her own. She just got really lucky, yeah. I guess I can see that. I can see that as a, as a point. Hello, Xena. Um, yeah. Hello. I agree with Destiny was, about, um... It was a bad... Jenny, your shit is lagging. Molly, what's up? Wait, do you guys know each other? You just say that, it, her, that her kid dying was a bad effect because it wasn't slowing her down. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely was. She didn't have to worry about any bullshit. What are you it, talking about? That was absolutely... Like, people... No. To, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. She didn't have to worry about people using the kid against her, yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, people try to do this thing where it's like... Shit. People try to do this thing where it's like, oh, no, like, she actually did suffer a real setback. Really? What was it? She had to... Her kid got aborted and she lost her dumb fuck husband or whatever. Yeah, both of those things would have been a huge detriment or impediment to her progress in the future. Like, losing them was a huge boon to her character. Absolutely, yeah. Stay mad. What do you mean? I'm, just, I'm talking about the things the character went through. You're fucking wrong. That was traumatic as hell, and it was one of the most, like, you know, driving things that happened to her. The really idea you try to contextualize what? it as a benefit, therefore it's not that interesting. It's like, wow. Really? What negative drawback does she suffer from losing her kid? Uh, losing her kid? Yeah. <laughs> I've lost her yeah. kid. Pretty I much it, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if I need to explain why that's detrimental for a character. I, I could go through a... Well, I can I explain know, why it was detrimental when Joffrey died, or T- 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 Tommen. What was the name of the other... Fuck, the other... Like, the Lannisters <laughs> losing their, uh, like, right to the throne, losing their ability to... Uh, continue their family line, like, all of those things were immensely important when, when children die, especially sons in Game of Thrones. When Rob Stark died, like, yeah, there's a lot of really bad things to, to the children and some of these families dying, but Daenerys losing her kid? Like, it just basically empowered her to move forward, like, even harder than she was before, like... I don't have to argue why there's a political detriment to her losing a kid. I'm talking about the character's journey. Yeah, is she, like, try- how, how many episodes she's been mourning her fucking aborted, like, witch baby? Like, she cares about her, like, two episodes, and then she's like, oh, time to go beat the slavers, lol. I'm sure one would argue that it's part of what fuels her throughout the rest of the seasons, especially, too, when she vindictively fucking murders all the people after they let her into a car, right? <clears throat> vindictively murders the people. Did she murder them, or was it just another one of the 15 scenes where she's like, kill all the masters, but don't harm a slave? Well, maybe we agree on the fact that she... Like, I thought we were agreeing on the fact that she goes too far in a lot of places, but that's supposed to be set up for going so nuts in the final season, which I don't think was earned at all. Yeah, but I think that's also the whole... Isn't that part... I didn't read the books, so I don't know if there's, like, a more strict prophecy in the books, but in the show, it said that, like, every time a Targaryen is born, the gods flip a coin or something, right? So she was just one of the fucking lunatics, right? Well, she wasn't, but like her behavior up to that point wasn't lunatic level. 
Really? Doesn't she? Actually, no. actually so, it, so they came out with a book uh, about making of the show, and the writers, as they were writing her doing all this crazy shit, the writers were appalled that the fans were like cheering her on because they intended for her to be the villain secretly the entire time, yet that never came across in the show, or people are just crazy and they don't care when she kills rich there people. There is... Killing prisoners of war is definitely one step in a particular direction, but killing yeah. innocent women and children as they run screaming from you is is completely different. So, so. there's actually actually a reason behind that that they didn't show in the show. So because Targaryens have like this psychic connection to their dragon, if you notice whenever she's on the dragon, she never she's not really yelling out commands besides Dracaris, which she doesn't really have to. Most of the time she's just riding the dragon and it's fucking things up. Whenever her one of her dragons dies, because she has a psychic connection to that, you could argue that every death of a dragon just tears down a pillar of her mind. That's why she was going a little bonkers towards the end. Wow, we got a lot of extrinsic data there because there's nothing inside the show. A lot of inference. <laughs> but... I know, I know. Well, to be yeah, fair, I... Desi, if you remember uh, Drogon, right? He he burned the throne because he understood the symbolism of <laughs> destroying up. the one object in the world. <laughs> the whole series was like shit. a fucking dream at that point. It's okay? so cringe. <laughs> Wait, did either of you guys... Oh, God. Yeah, you're, you're doing this. Now I'm down the path. I'm already, Now I'm down. Why were lands given to the, um, to the Unsullied? Aren't they in one generation going to go extinct? I don't think they lands were. They could adopt. I thought, were did... lands given to the Unsullied? I'm pretty sure they left and they went. They went to go to Noth, which is a death sentence for them. The island of Noth, where Missandei's from, has these butterflies at night, where if they touch you, you just get fucking destroyed and die. So I'm pretty sure they were leaving all of them. The Dothraki, I think, stayed behind. Maybe. Okay, that might have been the case. But then, if they're gonna leave, then why would they agree to exile Jon Snow when they're not even gonna be there? <laughs> That was that was the agreement they got for him killing their queen. It was like he'll be exiled. Just chill. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. The Dothraki who literally, oh no, the Unsullied who were literally, yeah, her servant. The Dothraki who literally followed her yep. across the fucking ocean, which was a really big deal for the. Yeah, I don't know. Fuck me, dude. How stupid. <laughs> it ain't good. How long it was the? Uh, how many episodes long. was the Long Night again? Do you guys remember that? How many episodes? One was episode. That? <laughs> it was one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Episode three. That was the one that uh, threw me out of the show. Did did you manage to survive a bit longer than that? What do you mean? Like that, that was the episode where I was like, "This is over. It's fucked." Well, the there there were literally like fucked. two more episodes, and then the whole show was done, wasn't it? Well, there's three more, but most people pick the bells. So that's where she kills all the <laughs> the kids. <laughs> oh, when you were done, I was done. As soon as Tyrion left, or as soon as uh, yeah, Tyrion left King's Landing. That's when the show ended for me. Oh, that's funny, because, like, when when Tywin dies, that's basically where I cite, is, like, that's the the actual end of Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's, that's the same scene. That's why he right. leaves King's Landing after yeah. killing Tywin. Yeah. 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 And then there are people that I will fight to the death that swear out over that fucking Battle of the Bastards episode. That it was just... No, I'm with you on that. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. People celebrated the hell out of it when it came out, but the strategy on both sides of that fucking fight was, was insane. Strategy was terrible, but you gotta admit, that whole episode was very well done. Well, at least half of it. The other half was Daenerys. Daenerys' dragons taking like five minutes to burn one ship, which they changed up in the final season when she fights Euron, and one <laughs> dragon breath explodes the entire ship. But Battle of the Bastards was very well done. What's your take? I don't know your take on this, Destiny. What's your... You didn't like it? My issue... So, battle strategy aside. Sansa, for whatever reason, not saying anything aside. Lack of scouting and whole incoming army aside. Ignoring all of the plot points... I, my biggest disappointment thematically, and people will fire me on this, I don't give a fuck, is that it feels like, um, and maybe this is just me being hopeful or stupid or whatever, but like, there are a lot of characters that have a lot of development during the show. Sansa Stark arguably being one of them, that grow from season one to season wh wherever they wind up. And I thought, so what I, what I thought was going to happen was when, is, this, is it Tommen? No, it's not Tommen. What's the name of the Stark boy? Rickand? Yeah, Rickon. When, um, um, oh god, and then the crazy guy, Ramsey. When Ramsey releases uh, Rickon or whatever to go run towards Jon Snow, I thought that because Jon Snow had been Lord Commanders of the Night's Watch, because he'd watched a loved one die, because he'd been through all of this experience, I was like, this is a new and improved, evolved Jon Snow, and he's going to turn his back and he's going to lead his army like the leader that we've been waiting for him to become. 
when he just completely abandoned his post and marched his whole army to its fucking death because of his soy brother that he hadn't seen in 50 fuck i it just felt so stupid to me like the character was like completely hadn't evolved i thought that would have been like a big evolution point to show like where john snow's come from so for him to run and do that and then sacrifice everything it was just i just thought it was so fucking stupid i don't know well, he ran out to get him on the horse, and then the army comes to him to try and save him from. Well, the obviously, army, he's right? the commander of the army. Yeah, what do you mean? Of course, they're going to try to save him. It's not no, like I'm they're just going to. Oh, sorry. Like, so you said he like he led them out there. Like, obviously, he didn't mean to do it that way. He wanted to get Rick on back. Yeah, because he was acting then... like a child. He was acting like season one Jon Snow. This is. Um, so, I, don't know. I, I have plenty of issues with that episode. I don't know that I take that much issue with a, a brother desperately trying to get to another brother before he dies. Yeah, first of all, <laughs> how no. Not even half brother. He's not even a brother at all. Okay. I ain't talking blood. I'm talking love. <clears throat> he thought this guy was dead until like fucking how long? Who yeah, cares? Yeah, which is stupid. a stupid. big reason to be like, oh shit, there's my bro. And they never, they never talk about Rickon again after that. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, that's that. still, yeah, that's still, that's him. not on the show's part. Okay, uh -huh. that's obvious. <laughs> they're supposed to care about their family. <laughs> also, yeah. Destiny, you say that they didn't have really a lot of strategy. The Ramsey did have strategy, so. No, Ramsey did, thing. I agree. And Ramsey deserved to win because he played everything correctly, thematically, plot-wise. Like, he, yeah, he basically abused the biggest character defect in Jon Snow and he did everything right, and then he still lost for it. So it just felt like everything just felt so stupid. Well, yeah, he just auto lost because of uh, Littlefinger's uh, airy army, right? Like, he comes in from the side and just fucks everything up because Sansa got it. It's kind of boring as a. It, it, there's nothing intelligent on Jon's side that helps him win that fight. Yeah, just dumb. So stupid. Loser fuck. I hate him. <laughs> and then the whole, obviously, the whole, like, the biggest thing is, like, the revealing of the entire Targaryen Jon Snow thing. That being, like, probably, maybe in the past decade, one of the biggest reveals since literally, like, I'm your father, Luke. And then that meaning absolutely fucking nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And having absolutely no bearing on the plot for the entire fucking thing. And I swear to God, Red Team, if you were about to say, well, actually, it, meant it changed the way that he dealt with Daenerys, bullshit. It was that whole plot arc could have been completely fucking left out and it wouldn't have changed a single fucking thing. It's a shame that you, you don't like Jon Snow so much because uh, they're working on a Jon Snow sequel series. You're fucking Dude. lying. Shut by, the fuck by the up. Time they close out the series, God. nobody likes Jon Snow. Swear to God, Kit Harrington, he, he tried doing other things. It didn't work out. He was in Eternals, and I think that's the only thing. He was in Call of Duty. Was he in Call of Duty? Oh, yeah, he was. No, I'm talking about post-Game of Thrones. The only thing he's was done is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 that's not. So he went to... So allegedly, he went to a he went to HBO, and he's like, let's do a Jon Snow sequel series. And they're looking it over. They just announced another Game of Thrones spinoff. So we have Game of Thrones, we have House of the Dragon, and they're looking at this other spinoff called uh, A Night in the Seven Kingdoms, which is a lot of... Ice and Fire fans will tell you it's a better story than Game of Thrones. It's it's like smaller, but just very very good. Uh, he wants uh, Kid Harrington wants to do an original story with Jon Snow. Where will it take place? I have no idea. I don't know if he's going to be beyond the wall. My idea is going he's going to travel east and do stuff there. But I mean, I like yeah. I like Jon Snow in the context of Game of Thrones because he was one of the few like arguably incorruptible like good guys. Like, that was just like, he was like a super good guy, which doesn't fit with the world, but just having him be that, I thought was an interesting contrast to other things in the world. Um, but on his own, I don't know if I would watch like a Jon Snow prequel, but I don't know. Mm. Also, you should watch House of the Dragon. That's an easy recommend. Fuck it, okay, I'll add it to my to watch list. I really, hearing the stories, but I might just be sewing out because it was the beginning of Game of Thrones. Hearing the stories of like the whole Stark and Baratheon revolt, that seems like it would be a really cool story to tell. Like, They're probably going to do that if mm -hmm. House of the Dragon is super successful, which it looks like it might be if they can maintain the quality. I will say, like, um, I thought it was going to be shit. I, I watched it because a friend of mine wanted me to watch it for, like, a review podcast, and then mm -hmm. I was like, holy shit, this is actually really good. Um, Destiny, I think you should watch Merlin. I'll Merlin. add that to my next list shit, too, okay? <laughs> I don't know about It's the BBC. Of course, they've got accents, but it's really good. Okay, keep that in mind. Merlin, it's such a random recommendation. <laughs> How's oh, it random? God, it's true. Really I mean, it's John Snow. Story, there's dragons, there's it's magic. It's like medieval. Yeah, there's magic, there's yeah, dragons. It's an, author, it's an Arthurian tale, but it's got a modern slight twist to it, in a sense. And Merlin's, instead of an old, wise wizard, he's a young, immature, a little forgetful boy who's learning magics and learning the realm. And, like, it's really good. 
and King Arthur's pretty attractive. So, you think Destiny will like it? And 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 there's a black girl that plays Guinevere instead of she, her being a pale blonde Christian woman. She's a slave, and yeah, she falls in love. It's really good. Wow. Mhm. It's a little liberal. He'll like it. Keep that in mind, okay? Dude, Littlefinger was beaten by Arya and Sansa. Littlefinger was beaten by the Scooby Gang. That's essentially that what it comes down so to. So much ass. It was the worst. But then I don't know if that was worse or what they did to Varys. That's that's kind of a tough one. Yeah, everyone got Literally. stupid at the end. Everyone, everyone got. got stupid. You see the um, Conleth Hill, the actor for Varys, semi recently again was talking about how shit the writing was for him, and he's like, "They made me an idiot." <laughs> He's like, I think he threw the script down today when he first read it or something. That's the story. Yeah, at the table read. Yeah, he uh, he looked very upset, and mm. I, I don't blame him. But but at the same time, what do you do with these characters? If at, at a certain point, even George repeats this in the, in the books as well multiple times, the characters just kind of like repeat storylines. For example, in the first season of Game of Thrones, Tyrion goes to Winterfell. And then he gets captured, and then he's on the road. And then it happens again and again. Same with Jamie. Jamie, for the longest time, is not in King's Landing with Cersei. He's on the road, and then he comes back to King's Landing, on the road again, back to King's Landing, on the road again. So they just kind of, what are you going to do with Varys? He can't... Well, hang on. All you're highlighting is how they didn't do things with them, as opposed to they they couldn't. Like, they obviously still can. Like, I was listening to you guys earlier saying, like, you know, I guess, you know, what really ultimately could they have done with an ending for this? Like, I don't know, not piss on every single character? You could do some generic, like, fan service stuff. John fighting the Night King and winning oh, is one of the most obvious fan service things that? ever. Why didn't that happen? Exactly. Like, I don't even give a fuck that it would have been so fuck. Dude, I'll take the five to ten minute soy as fuck fan service fight where Jon Snow d pulls out Moonbeam, whatever the fuck his sword was, as an <laughs> epic fucking showdown with the goddamn Night King. I absolutely, one million fucking percent would have soyed out and, and I would have soyed the whole fucking time. I would have loved watching it. Instead of The reason why Arya, he didn't fight the Night King is because the Night King saw him kill that, that White Walker at Hardhome. And the Night King is not stupid. He's not, he doesn't, maybe he didn't know he could take Jon Snow. Maybe he did. But it's way better to play it safe like he did and just raise the dead and have the all the zombies maul him down. Yeah, but why the, didn't the, but John the, didn't even try to fight him? He wasn't the even... super fan service thing I would want is take all of the potential Azora highs together in like a small and you know covert group and they all have to go beyond the wall to get the Night King themselves. But they don't know who ultimately is, but they know they all have a good chance. Take Melisandre or whatever, right? Like and then you have <laughs> the undead army attack Winterfell and win. And a bunch of our heroes escape, and they have to go down to King's Landing. Cersei, Landy, Landing. Cersei accepts them in. Winter comes to King's Landing. How fucking cool would that look? And then, huge technically, fight. Winter did come to King's Landing, but they never followed up on that. Remember at the yeah, end of like season seven, it was, seven, it was <laughs> shit. <laughs> and and that's supposed that was supposed to be where Game of Thrones was supposed to go. All of these different like divergent plot lines based on politics to end and on power. The long night, right? Yeah, they yeah. all have to bind together to beat the zombies. That's and like I the most obvious we, we thing. We even got like a hint of that when Cersei saw the captured what orc or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and the, it looked like the angle of the show because that's what I assumed. I assumed I, I if you would have I would have bet money, I would have given big odds. Winterfell is absolutely going to fall, of course, and then the army of death is going to move its way to the south, and then. There, there's like a grander theme of like all of our human struggle and conflict or whatever it means nothing in the face of like an overwhelming evil and blah 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 and it would have been like some shit like that rather than at, at lowly Winterfell the entire fucking army is stopped in one in like a six hour battle like yeah and you have the ice dragon and the fire dragon fighting each other and all the all the shit you want that could have happened yeah where was our flying scene with fucking Daenerys on a dragon fighting the Night King on a dragon there even for fan service shit I would have I would have went for it. I would have been okay with that. Well, that was a big thing about uh, The Long Night. People can fucking see what's happening in that episode. It's one of the most embarrassing elements. True. So, yeah. And he was so insecure about it. He was like, you need to turn the brightness up on your TVs, you idiots. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man. That's, it. That's what we gotta do. Actually, I think they explained that being a problem with uh, the streaming service. Like, when you watched it on HBO. I haven't... I, I stopped buying the Blu-rays at Season 5. Like, after Season 5, everything was shit. But according to them, the problem wasn't with how the episode was shot. The problem was with how HBO's streaming service is. And I guess it compressed as the much file. As, 
I want to believe you. Uh, it's Miguel Sapotnik, right? He's the director. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't. I th I find that to be a con relatively consistent problem in a lot of his uh his stuff. I like his direction, but mm. a lot of it lighting wise can be troublesome. Um, Did you see? Wait, wait, wait the, real quick. The, I'm the, sorry. The just real quick. You guys can keep chatting. I have to make an important phone call. I'll be back one second. Okay. Okay. Here's a can of worms. Okay. Oppenheimer, three out of ten. I already saw your baity video about that. You, you, it's like, right. you, it, that felt like a call to all film reviewers to come and attack you. Here's Mahler. Here's what Mahler's going to say, guys. I'm sorry. I pre-watched this combo. Mahler's going to say, I agree with all of your takes. I just would have given it like a 6 out of 10 or a 5 out of 10. I think you were too harsh. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't know wrong. that you were correct about anything. I, wow. I did listen to it. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, what did you think I was incorrect about? Well, so this is the thing. The problem with Oppenheim is I saw it the one time. So as much as I, I don't have my references, I need to see it again. I need to have it in high quality so I can prove you definitively wrong. <laughs> That's but good. you said a whole bunch of shit that was baffling. You talk about, like, the whole film is about him as a character. You were like, I wish we got to know what he thought and how he felt about the bomb and making it, its effect mm -hmm. on the world. I was like, That's a whole movie. Yeah, and somehow you don't really learn anything about what he thinks or feels. What do you think The Last Light is about? What, were he's talking to Einstein because they want to shoehorn that guy into... He, he was a scientist, by the way. Because they want to shoehorn him into the movie in as many fucking scenes as possible? Oh, yeah. It wasn't at all about the substance of Einstein's insight into the nature of creating the atomic bomb of what they think it did to the, the world we live in. Yeah, so it would have been really no, cool if they actually wrestled with that theme for a majority of the movie and not, like, hyper ADHD transfer totally from did. one story to one story to one story to one. Really, what did the Schwab or Klaus or whatever? What the fuck was that guy's name? Not thinking of Klaus Schwab. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The red pillars have rotted my fucking mind. Um, the plot line with the Robert Downey Jr. character, Strauss, not fucking yeah. Klaus, yeah. The whole Strauss plot line had nothing to do with any of that. They should have ejected that whole stupid fucking... They should have ejected hey, that whole I'm not doing the Oppenheimer plotline. debate until I get good. to rewatch okay, it, okay? that's good. I'm gonna go rewatch it. I'm gonna bring a fucking notebook, okay? I'm gonna walk out with a... Good. With a tone set up. of criticism. You should get a partner. I'll bring my EFAP lads, and we'll fuck you up. It'll be great. Uh, we'll do it, okay? We're gonna meet on the streets, and we're gonna have an Oppenheimer down, okay? Hell yeah. And then once you're wrong about that, I'll be like, right, time to talk about Interstellar. That you hate Interstellar? I can fucking, that's one of my most hated movies of oh all time. Oh my god, and Whoa. you're gonna defend Shitheimer? I can't even believe you would do this. Oh my god. Yeah, but see, god. clearly the difference between us is I care about the substance, you care about the fucking colors, so of course you would fit. No, what do you mean I care about the colors? There's just nothing. There's nothing in Oppenheimer to like. There's not a single thing in this movie that you can like, other unless you're like, I like Oppenheimer because the, the fucking, the CPS... The celebrity per second on the screen is higher in that film than in any other fucking three-hour movie that's been released as a dawn of man fucking kind, okay? There are more celebrities. There are more celebrities I in Oppenheimer than the fucking New Testament, okay? It's unfucking it's believable. Wonderful. Yeah, you like that? Oh, I know that celebrity. Oh, I know that celebrity. Oh, I know that. That's Talk about what? ripping you out of a They're fucking playing movie. They're characters, Destiny. Characters. Really? They are they? Because say. it seemed like a lot of them didn't even have a single fucking line. So, who knows, you know? Jesus. Hey, man, if your audio was broken, that's, that's okay. We can get you a new copy. Yeah, well, if my audio is broken, it's just because of Nolan's mixing for every fucking movie he does. Okay, <laughs> okay you got me there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, I didn't watch Tenet, okay? But apparently that's, like, the worst one for that. It used to be the worst one. Now it's the second worst one. Oh. Have you, have you like, talked seriously with any Oppenheimer fans yet, or have you just annoyed your chat There with are it? no Oppenheimer fans. They don't exist. They're just transient what? losers on the internet that pretend they want to stand the movie, and then when you push them on it, like, yeah, it was dog shit. Tenet was a better movie than Oppenheimer, okay? Oh, I haven't even seen Tenet, and I know I that's mean. Fuck you, Lycan. Fuck you. There you go. The truth comes out. It's just because he's in the military, so he's a dumb attachment to anything related to the military, okay? You prefer a movie that's back to front. Oh my god, than... true! They were so obsessed with celebrities in fucking Oppenheimer, they even name drop people. Do you remember the senator? Who voted against it? Oh, some guy named John F. Kennedy. Huh? Oh my god, ominous, and then scene cut. Wow, I know that name. Oh my god. Bro, kill me, bro. Jesus Christ. <sighs> There's other stuff in the film. You know, some really great stuff. Yeah, that one scene? woman's boobs? Sure, yeah, there you go. Oh, That's I like plus, it. Right? I like the part where she was Two writing pluses. him, and she was like, read this in English. And then he was like, I am Oppenheimer, become death of all world. Like, wow. Oh my god, lay Reddit quote. Yes, queen, yes. <laughs> Bro, what a Why cringe. haven't you got a media podcast? I do, like, it's called Destiny.gg, where I just scream about random shit all the time, okay? Oh, uh, you should do it for new releases, like once per two weeks or something.
It'd be funny to listen to you rant. Good. I'm you glad. piss everybody off in the best way. Good. Yeah. Jesus. What a... God. God, it's so cringe. Oh my god, I just hate it. Anyway, what else? Anything else you guys want to chat about? Why are you talking about Game of Thrones anyway? Because on my flight back, I opened my phone and I got recommended a 40 minute video of all the old council, or big, large council meetings, small council meetings, Jesus. Oh, and I watched yeah. them all and I was like, oh god. So much Tywin, so much Tyrion, so much, yeah. so much good stuff, yeah. Well, hey, uh, you know, House of Dragon season two will be out eventually. If that one's banger as well, I'll, I'll let you know so I can you can be safe in getting invested again because it's only going to be three seasons. It'll stop. The story's done. Actually, then. it might be four seasons, maybe. I, I okay. Yeah. We'll, well see what in happens. any case, the story's told in written form, so they, they you know they've got tracks to follow. It's not quite like uh, Game of Thrones where they just do whatever the hell they want. And mm -hmm. also, as was mentioned earlier, the showrunner seems to care, seems to be invested. So that's neat. Yeah, yeah. The showrunner is a big fan, so I, I feel like we're in safe hands with that. We'll just have and to, to see. And to be fair, I would actually argue it's almost worth seeing it just for uh, Patty Considine's Viserys. That shit was top notch. Um, a lot of good characters, but he was easily the best. All right. I guess I'll jump out. Bye bye. Bye you. Yeah, same here. Thank you for having me, Destiny. Yeah, anytime, buddy. You've got a uh, perm, so you can always just jump in this room if you ever see me in here. If you want to screw me over some movie shit or whatever. <laughs> Thank you. All I'll right. talk to you later. Have fun, bye.